Some folks never think twice about pitching in and helping out, not even looking for thanks. But a good deed by a good neighbor doesn't go unrewarded in my kitchen. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. My buddy Dave and I are bringing the wood in for the winter. When we're done, I promised him and myself a steak as big as the job at hand. I haven't figured out what's on the menu yet, but I won't need a recipe for that because I sure know where I'm going to start. A thick, juicy, beefy steak. Just a thing for a couple of Paul Bunyans. And it looks like I've got more than enough wood out there to get a fire going for these babies, because I can't think of a better way to cook a New York strip line than over live fire. I mean, that's flavor. And you know, anytime I head out to cook over a fire, I always think about marinating. Grilling, marinating, they just seem to go hand in hand. Let me see what I can find to add a little more complimentary flavor to that meat. I definitely don't want to hide all its beefy goodness, though. Now marinades do three simple things. They tenderize, they moisturize, and they aromatize. This meat right now, of course, is plenty tender. But you know, that fire's pretty hot, so it could handle a little bit of moisturizing as well. The olive oil will actually help protect the juiciness of the meat. That leaves aromatizing, which is the key reason I would marinate meat like this. Add some more flavor to it. Let me see what I have. Mustard, of course, standard marinade ingredient. Let's see what's in my herb kit. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to include a lemon, which is very acidic, so I'm going to have to be careful how I add it to the marinade. I think I'll whisk it up first, and then we'll slap it all together into one of those freezer bags. That's plenty of olive oil for two steaks. I'm using Dijon, but of course I could be using any mustard at all. That's plenty. Now, the juice of the lemon is the acidic part, not the zest. I think I'll put the zest in now, and I'll squeeze the juice over the steaks as I actually grill them. That way the acid in the juice won't have time to tenderize, but it will have time to flavorize. Rosemary. Hey, rosemary's wood. I'm cooking over wood. Yeah, that works today, but you know what? You could use any one of these herbs, whatever you happen to have. Now, I'm going to add some pepper to this, but I'm not going to add salt, because if I do, it'll start to draw moisture out of the meat. It's sort of the anti-moisturizer. I don't want that to happen. I use freezer bags all the time when I'm cooking outside. They're really convenient. They're a great, simple, easy way to carry things around when you're heading for a campfire. A little bit of cleanup, then time to move on. Looks like Dave is slowing down a bit out there. I know it'll perk him up. How about a cup of coffee? Even better, how about a cup of mocha? In essence, I'm just going to make my favorite hot cocoa and whisk in a little coffee. I begin with a cup or so of milk for each person. So that's two cups, there we go. And then I simply add a heaping spoonful of cocoa powder for each cup. And then a heaping spoon of brown sugar. Again, one spoonful for each cup. A big splash of vanilla. And some coffee. Now I'm gonna do this cowboy coffee style. In other words, the grounds are going right in and I'll strain those coffee grinds out later. 
Now, because there's milk in there, there's the potential for that to boil up and make a big mess on the stove. So I'm gonna pay close attention. I'm gonna stir it for a few minutes. And while that comes up to the heat, I'll get the chocolate ready. The dark chocolate, the darker the better. I'll throw that right in. This is not the kind of thing you need a recipe for because hey, simple is best. I mean a little cocoa, some chocolate, some vanilla, some milk, some flavors just go together naturally. This ought to get that wood pile stacked. Two steaming mugs of hot mocha. Hey, that steak is looking good and getting better by the minute. And I'm sure there's some potatoes around here somewhere. My buddy Dave helped me split and stack a bunch of wood today. I've invited him back for a steak dinner. This looks great. Typical for Dave. You know, Dave's the kind of guy that sees a job that needs doing and just jumps on in without being asked. Which is kind of the way I cook, too. I've got a pair of premium strip steaks resting comfortably with some new aromatic friends. Rosemary, lemon zest, mustard. A beefy reward for a job well done. You know, I can't think of a better flavor to add to steak than the flavor of a campfire. It's really simple. There's just three easy things to remember. First of all, hardwood and lots of it because it burns hotter and it just tastes better. Secondly, you need a good fire pit. It's low, it's down, it's out of the wind. And third, you need lots of patience. All this smoke smells great, but you can't cook over smoke. You need a bed of coals. This fire needs time to fully develop its flavor. Kind of like those strip steaks in there, because beef needs time to fully develop its flavor, too. Since the first caveman returned to a forgotten side of meat, only to discover that it tasted better aged than freshly killed, cooks have known that time is on their side. Because believe it or not, the best beef is, well, decaying. It's true, freshly killed beef has a metallic one-dimensional flavor and it's actually quite tough. Aging releases natural enzymes in the meat that soften its connective tissue and improves its flavor. Now, there are two basic ways to age beef, the dying art of dry aging and modern, efficient, wet aging. The vast majority of today's beef is wet aged in tightly sealed, oxygen-free bags. After one to four weeks just above freezing, it's good to go. Traditional dry aging yields a stronger, beefier flavor than modern wet aging but it also results in expensive moisture loss. So dry aging is really only found in old school steakhouses. So don't worry, that beefy flavor we all love so much, it'll stand the test of time. I'm not quite ready to fire these strips yet, but I do want to start bringing them up to room temperature. Right now, they're refrigerator cold. Eventually, they're going to be grill hot. It's a lot easier if they warm up to room temperature now before going on the grill and finishing. That way, I only have to control a little bit of temperature rise on the grill. It just makes sense. Hey, the ingredient inspires the technique. Now for some potatoes. I don't know about your kitchen, but in my kitchen where there's beef, there's potatoes. And I've got some high starch bakers standing by ready to go. But you know, I'm not going to bake them today. I'm thinking about scalloped potatoes. Scalloped potatoes. Three simple parts. The potatoes, dairy, and some aromatics. All baked off in a simple baking dish, whatever you happen to have. 
I'm gonna begin by slicing the potatoes very thinly. So basically what I do is start with enough potatoes to fill whatever baking pan I happen to be using, and then I add the dairy. You can use straight milk or straight cream or meat somewhere in the middle like I do, because hey, we all know cream's got a little bit more fat in it than milk does. Some nutmeg and some garlic. This is very French using nutmeg with potatoes. I learned this in cooking school years ago. Before that, I thought nutmeg was just something you used in desserts. And now some garlic. But you know, I'm not actually gonna put the garlic into the potatoes. There is a way to add the flavor of the garlic without actually adding the garlic. Check it out. Take that face and rub it all over the pan. And now I'll just toss that out. It's done its job. The pan is garlic flavored. And there is one more optional ingredient you can add to scallop potatoes. Cheese, any cheese. Let me see what I have. And cheddar. Of course, this is extra old aged cheddar because it has more flavor. Now, of course, a little bit of salt and pepper. Maybe I should have said a lot of salt and pepper. Now, I'll just toss this up. And at this point, put them in the pan. With one simple ingredient, I can turn this scallop potato into scallop potato gratin. Bread crumbs. All gratin means is brown, so I'm simply gonna sprinkle something on the top here that will brown in the oven. There we go. But I know from long experience that if I don't sit them on a baking pan, in about an hour, I'm gonna be cleaning up a mess in the oven. I also wanna cover them with some foil because by covering the pan with foil, I'll help keep all the moisture in the potatoes in the pan where it belongs. Now, I've preheated the oven to 350 degrees. It'll take about an hour or so to bake off. So, my steak dinner is shaping up nicely. The meat is warming up to room temperature, the potatoes are fired, the fire is burning down nicely. The only thing missing here is some veggies. My buddy Dave helped me split and stack a bunch of wood today. So to return the flavor, I've invited him back for a steak dinner. A big steak for a big favor. Now I've got a few New York strips marinating with rosemary, mustard, and lemon zest. And best of all, a hardwood fire to grill them on. Those coals are burning down nicely, and since they're looking good, I might as well grill some veggies out there too. Let's see what I have. Broccoli, nope. Oh yeah, peppers. So here's how I prep a pepper for the grill. I pull the seeds, I pull the stem, get rid of all the seeds, and I cut that down and mash it down just a little bit. Flatten it out so it'll sit on the grill nice and evenly. The nice thing about red peppers is that they're loaded with sweetness, perfect for the grill because all that sweetness caramelizes. Now these are just crying out for some more flavor. Let's see, something aromatic for the grill. Nutmeg, cardamom, nah. Fennel seed, perfect. The dominant flavor in Italian sausage. And who doesn't like sausage and peppers? Italian. Where is my olive oil? There it is. And balsamic. That should do it. Oh, and some red onions too. This is simple. Just splash some olive oil on. Don't be afraid of that olive oil. It adds flavor and it helps the vegetables grill and caramelize. 
The balsamic is more for flavor, just a splash of that. That should do. Lots of fennel seed. And then I'll just slice the red onion right in. Let's toss those in. Salt and pepper. You could eat these just like they are now, but they're gonna be even better on the grill. that this is perfect that's a bed of coals lots of heat but no flame you need the heat to cook but flame will burn the food this is perfect now when I fire peppers I tend to fire them skin down and that way the skin will char nicely a little bit of char flavor is okay I mean that's the flavors of the grill when you're cooking over live coals you really have to rely on your instinct so what I do is just hold my hand over them. If it gets too hot in just a few seconds, then it's definitely hot enough. If I can hold my hand there for say 10 seconds, then it's cold and you need to make it hotter. That's called flavor. I'd say these are ready to turn. I find the flavor of smoke to be one of the strongest memories I have. It must be primal. I mean, we all love the flavor of smoke. Now, here's another flavor I love when I'm sitting around my campfire. My homemade barbecue sauce. This stuff is definitely inspired by the flavor of that smoke. My signature barbecue sauce begins with a can of chopped tomatoes, a chopped onion, a handful of minced garlic cloves, and a few spoonfuls of Dijon mustard, all at sharp pungency while a cup each of red wine vinegar and brown sugar add traditional sweet and sour balance. For distinctive aroma, season the works with a few multicultural splashes of Worcestershire, soy, and olive oil. After that, add as much ground ginger and chili powder as you're in the mood for. Then, personalize it with a secret spice or two. Nutmeg, cinnamon, cumin, caraway, or coriander are all fair game, but shh, keep it a secret. Simmer everything together until they reduce and thicken, and simply puree until smooth. This stuff is so good that you don't have to use it just as a barbecue sauce. You can just sit it on the table and spoon it on as a condiment, too. So, how do you know when the vegetables are ready to come off the grill? Once they soften up, they're ready. It really is that simple. But now for prime time, let's get these steaks on. Here's another reason I love these freezer bags. I don't have to get my hands dirty. This is what I call perfection. A job well done, a beautiful day, and a couple of steaks on a wood fire. Hey, in my world, this is about as good as it gets. The only thing missing here, besides Dave, is a fork. Looking good. My buddy Dave and I have been working hard today. We got all this wood split, chopped, and stacked, and now as a reward, I've got a couple of steaks grilling on a wood fire. I've even got some grilled vegetables. I've got some potatoes in the oven. I'm sure there's a couple of cold beers around here somewhere. And now, oh yeah, just look at that. Perfect. 
So I grabbed some fresh basil out of the house because I thought I'd toss some into the peppers, make a salad out of this. Piece of cake, really. I do this all the time. You don't always have to chop herb leaves up to get them on your plate. They're perfectly good just like this, especially basil leaves. Hey, maybe this will perfume my steak a little bit. Look at that. Now that's what I call a salad. There's only one thing missing here though. Remember that lemon? Now's the time to add it. A little bit of lemon juice on there to finish this off. This is very Italian actually, very authentic. Okay. You know, in this world, we all have something to offer. Whether it's a chainsaw or a steak on the grill, we all bring something unique to the table. And that's why food can be such a wonderful way to share your family's blessing with your friends and neighbors. And that's also why a steak at the end of a hard working day is a perfect reward. Thanks for all that help today. No problem, Michael, it's my pleasure. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thanks for the steak. I ended up marinating it with mustard and olive oil, rosemary, and lemon zest. Yeah, I can taste some lemon. How's the doneness on your steak? It's uh, medium rare, just the way I like it. Are you gonna come help me with my uh, with my wood? I guess so. Can you cook me a steak too? <laughs> I'll try. What do you say? Next week, paint the house, maybe? Sure, man. You keep cooking me steak like this, and I'll clean your gutters too. <laughs>